I would like to thank all of our audience to uh, for uh, for coming to this uh, this session and this interview. Uh, so far, we try to get sort of um, overview from different uh, stakeholder, uh, and now we have Cool Funk. Uh, cool is uh, uh, master students, so we will try to uh, see the uh, view of uh, uh, students, how they are thinking about this um, multidisciplinary uh, approach or courses that we try to uh, achieve during this workshop. Um, uh, Kul actually is a scientist, so he study chemistry at University of Tromso. Uh, but maybe you can introduce yourself by a better way, what you are doing and from where I think you are not from Norway, right? No, I am from the United States. Mm -hmm. Um, like he said, I'm doing a master's in chemistry. I am currently working on my master's project, so I'm in the lab a lot. I'm working on uh, palladium coupling chemistry. Okay, what is this? Um, it's uh, coupling two organic molecules together uh, using palladium as the catalyst. Okay. Okay, and the target is not only to couple two two molecules, for example, but you aim to produce something different. Yeah, basically. So when you're coupling two molecules, uh, the molecules attach to the catalyst, in this case, palladium, as ligands, and then they react to each other from proximity and make one new molecule where the two molecules are attached at specific places. Okay. Yeah, and of course, this new molecule can can be used for yeah. some application like medicine or things yeah. like this. Yep. Uh, cool. So uh, you said that you are from the state. So the question is, how you are ended here at Tromso, across the uh, ocean? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in the United States, uh, school is kind of expensive. So my main reason for coming over here is. Uh, to save money. <laughs> um, if I wanted to go to school for my master's in the US, I would probably have to work for another two years to afford it. Mm. Uh, in addition to the two years, I already worked to pay off my student loans for my bachelor's. Okay. So, yeah. okay. so you, you got your uh, bachelor from US or from here? From the US. Okay. Okay. So you there, of course, it's everything is expensive. So this means that two year and two year, four year more, just to cover your master, master and yeah. bachelor work. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, yeah. This is a long, lo, lo, long work, hard work. Yeah. Mm. But why chemistry? Why chemistry? Yeah. Um, I did my bachelor's in biochemistry and biophysics, which is mostly like protein sciences, if you look at it. Um, but I really loved organic chemistry when I was there. Uh, so after my bachelor's, I decided when I was going to go to graduate school, I wanted to be more focused on organic chemistry. Okay. Okay. This is good because I also love organic chemistry, mm -hmm. but I have to say that I like inorganic chemistry much better. <laughs> Because, you know, in organic chemistry, you have this long formula. It's always difficult to uh, uh, understand what is going on with such long, long formula. But for inorganic, it's okay, manageable somehow. Mm. But this is good, actually. I, uh, I can see this is good. I, I, I think I am a lucky person because I don't know that you uh, was studying biochemistry and uh, physical chemistry, you said? Uh, biochem and biophysics. Okay, so actually you are studying chemistry, biology, and physics somehow. Yeah, in okay. a way. In a way, yep. So what you are planning after your master? Um, well, uh, I had to save up to come here. So right after my master's, I have to work for at least a year or so just to uh, get the funds back up. But... Um, I will be trying to get into the chemical industry. Okay. Um, probably synthesis, 
in production. Um, and after that, not so sure yet. <laughs> okay, so you you thinking to to go for a, a chemical industry here in Norway or somewhere else, uh, US or? Uh, probably in the US because uh, here I would have to get a job before my residence permit expires in order to stay for that job, uh, uh, which only yeah. gives me like a month or so to get a, that job. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, I can see the point because uh, you have to apply for uh, for a visa or so to stay for, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But at the same time, I, I am aware that uh, you are uh, managing a joint program between geology and chemistry departments. Um, this is also interesting for uh, for us to talk about because um, this is two different topics somehow. Of course, there is there is interaction between them because both of them are uh, I call them normally hard core science because geology is is fundamental science, chemistry is fundamental science, so both of them is hardcore science, but it's a bit far away. So how you came with this idea about this creating this joint program between um, these two departments? Um, well, I am also a student assistant here at UIT, which means that uh, I aim to plan events for the students, academic events mainly. And um, I felt in my bachelor's that one, the most interesting courses were the interdisciplinary ones, and two, they're the most useful ones. Normally, if someone goes into school for straight math or straight physics, they don't usually stay right on that course unless they're staying in academia. Oh. Um, so I was talking with a few of the other student assistants and some of them are in the geology realm and I've taken a few geology classes previously. So I thought we could do a chemistry geology uh, series of events. Okay, okay. And you plan this for this semester and next semester as well, or it will be long, long term uh, event. Um, well, I'm not the only one involved. Uh, I'm trying to get it started for this semester, but if it goes well, it will continue to next semester and uh, me and the other person in the geology uh, section of the school have talked about planning even events for the summer because that's the best time to go out and do uh, trips for mm -hmm. geology research. Okay, have, have chemistry students to geology fields or so. Yeah, and uh, geology students as well. Yep, of course. Uh, yep. Pulling both into both majors. Okay, but this motivation is coming from you or from uh, your superior, like a professor who are teaching you at chemistry or just by the discussion with, with other? Um, as the student assistants, uh, we're kind of given free reign in the types of events we can plan uh, as long as they're academic. So uh, this was my idea and I uh, tried to rope some people into it and uh, I'm just trying to get it going. You know? Okay, yeah. And the main motivation behind this, like just to give some skills for the students, from chemistry uh, to geology and geology from chemistry and things like this? Yeah, um, to give some awareness of the other subjects as well as uh, some skills like you're saying so that when the students get out of their major, they can go into fields that are related to both more prepared. Yeah, uh, I maybe can highlight a point that you said, uh, you said that students who are doing pure science, pure mathematics or pure chemistry, at some stage they are lose uh, the orientation or maybe lose interest. So I'm correct or? Um, I think it's different for every person, but uh, I had several people that were in the same major as me in my bachelor's, which is biochemistry and biophysics. And uh, there were definitely people that uh, 
aimed more towards the biology sections, more towards the physics sections. I even know one that switched completely over to programming um, for uh, bioinformatics, mm. you know. Um, so uh, I think it really depends on the person, but uh, if there are more, say, interdisciplinary courses, or uh, career opportunities for that that are presented to the students. Mm. I think they might stay a little bit more in between. Mm. Actually, I like this uh, this term career opportunity because my point of view is that uh, uh, university is not a school. University is an organization that prepares students for society. So we are doing another job than school. We uh, not only give them science, but we prepare them for finding the best job for them. And to do so, I think you need to give them different skills. Yeah. Um, but for this program that you are trying to run now, I hope that it will start as well in November, I think. That's what we're shooting for. Okay, yep. A middle or first of November or still still not uh, not planned um, in detail? I'm hoping to get it going by like the second week of November, but I'm not absolutely sure since we're still lining up the schedules. Okay. Actually, I have a question related to this schedule thing because, you know, now we try to make this interview almost 20 of October. And you say that we uh, run or you would run this program second week of November. So we have sort of two weeks, three weeks from now. Do you think this time is, is enough to get students in? Uh, yeah, with the use of social media now, um, it's easy to get the word out that something okay. is happening. Okay. Um, and uh, I find that most people don't plan things more than like a week ahead of time so if you let them know two weeks ahead of time then uh, you won't get too much of the problem where people aren't coming because they already had something planned okay so this is actually good motivation for me because we uh, running a similar program uh, not similar but somehow similar uh, also in November, and I thought, okay, we have only uh, two weeks, three weeks of time to get students. So this is a positive, positive uh, point of view from you. So a good motivation, at least for me, to to push in. Mm. Um, will you consider as well in this in this program other topics like biology, like um, other students from from other departments? You have highlighted some some point like uh, biophysics, uh, biochemistry, uh, bioinformatic. So, do you think this also can be like join this 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 program, or you can create another program for them? Um, in this program, uh, like I said, the point is to uh, bring different majors into each other to give the students. Uh, more exposure and more skills. So, for example, if a biology student wants to come, great. Okay. <laughs> they can come. Okay. Um, as far as uh, events being planned for uh, even more majors, uh, if the topic at hand is viable for that, I don't see why not. Okay. Um, but the uh, if you're going to have a specific topic for an event, um, you can only <laughs> include so many majors usually. For example, if you're talking about uh, electrochemical processes in the mining industry, it's kind of hard to bring biology into that. Yes. Um, except for maybe a side point, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I completely agree with you. But this is good that you are open for other other students than uh, geology and uh, chemistry. This means that uh, I am recording this, this video from uh, Arctic Marine Biology Department. So 
I think we can distribute the words around us, see students, see interesting of them. And uh, maybe students can bring some ideas for us, like, okay, why, why not we can prepare a similar uh, a similar uh, lecture between between biology and uh, chemistry, geology, uh, faculty of um, IT, mathematics, things like this. So this is good. So I have a question uh, related to uh, your experience with similar uh, programs. So you studied at US. Uh, and you started here, your master? Yeah, I did the courses for my master here. Yeah, so the question, uh, uh, if there is similar ideas somewhere, like bring two topics in a same context, in the same lecture, in the same program? As far as courses go, I've only seen it when uh, that's like an already very specialized field. Mm. So for example, I've seen biochemistry courses, which are basically almost all about uh, biochemical processes and the human body or something like that, which goes into organic chemistry and biology. Um, but I haven't seen anything like biogeology or chemistry geology courses, mm. um, which I think uh, the industries would be benefited by uh, schools having those types of courses and as far as events go I haven't seen any interdisciplinary events um, at my bachelor's or here being offered okay. so here or in US as well the same missing or the same gap mm -hmm. okay this is good this is good that we have opportunity to do something so of course it's not good because I think there is a gap here we need to cover, yeah. But from your point of view, now we are speaking about this program that you are trying to uh, manage or try to, to do be between chemistry and geology. Uh, and you say that we can extend it to some, some extent to include biology include mathematics, include physics or so. Do you think there is a possibility to include uh, topics like business, like uh, management, administration to it? Um, it depends on the topic, but I think there's definitely a possibility. So for example, if we go back to electrochemical processes, um, you could even go into uh, different solvents or something that could be used to reduce the energy needed to do the electrochemical process. And then you could bring in your business people mm -hmm. because uh, they could find the optimal financial way to do it. Mm -hmm. As well as um, if you are introducing specific topics for a specific industry, uh, you can have professionals in that industry come in as the speakers to give a viewpoint of what the industry is like for the students so that they have more exposure to it, as well as maybe even know of a new job that uh, they didn't know about previously. Okay, so you think there is a possibility to do so? Oh yeah. Yep, yep. But what's the opportunity that we will get from this in general in general well i think uh we'll have more specialized people if we uh bring people from chemistry or geology over to the other side uh because not everyone knows everything right mm -hmm. but uh if you have somebody in geology coming into say my lab working with uh palladium chemistry they mm -hmm. may know more about how palladium interacts with other things, especially in solid forms, than I would. And whatever knowledge they have may help my research progress even faster. And chemistry going into geology, same. Okay. So you will bring two fields in the same lab somehow, and each one will contribute with uh, ideas and knowledge. Yeah, basically. And yeah. 
the total outcome would be a more efficient progress to the goals of either the business or uh, the university for research or mm. whatever, really. Yeah, but how this can affect business sector or uh, affect society in general? Ah, do you think, so... do you think uh, students who have one degree from just geology um, will be for him good enough to go to the work or maybe he needs some more knowledge? Um, well, I don't know about good enough, but I believe that uh, a geology student that also has a good background in chemistry would be better prepared for industry. And mm. like I said, uh, make more efficient progress within that industry. Yep. So this means that you try to give them more opportunity, more skills in order to try to open doors for other opportunities, try to explore uh, job market in in a better way yeah somehow mm. okay and what do you think about the challenging for this this process like like now now actually you are working with this program you try to create this program so what's the challenge that you you you, you have so far well uh <laughs> the first and foremost challenge that we're having now is scheduling uh because it seems that uh students of different majors their schedules don't line up so well mm. <laughs> uh, so there's that and then with academic events uh it's always hard to uh get a lot of people to come uh because typically if they're not going to be in school they don't want to be in school <laughs> mm. Mm. um so there's that as well and then uh finding good topics that would be interesting for both sides or all the sides of science that are coming. Um, there's that, I think there may be a, a limited amount of topics currently that we could possibly go over. Um, yeah. Did you find someone to teach? Um, we haven't decided on the topic yet because we haven't decided on when okay. yet okay so mm -hmm. so the process is that you will try to figure out the time slot then you will figure out who will teach or the topics that you will teach uh yeah most likely we'll find a good time slot and then we'll email some people and based on who's available we can choose the best topic for that time um yeah because if we want to do a certain topic but whoever would be best to have it isn't available, that doesn't help us so much. So it's more dependent on uh, who will be available than what topic would be best to cover now. Okay, yep. But do you think it's better to organize a course, not just a lecture or not just an event, a course that will extend for one semester that include 50% topic and 50% another topic, like 50% pure geology, 50% pure chemistry. Do you think this, is, this is, can help? Yeah, I think that would uh, definitely be more helpful than just an event. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as getting uh, it started right now, we barely have anything and doing a whole extra course and uh, finding out where it would fit in what majors and paying someone to organize the course and mm. teach the course is definitely a lot more expensive than just setting up an event. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think if we gain a lot of traction with interdisciplinary events, maybe it'll convince uh, UIT as well as other schools to make courses like that. Mm. But I don't think that they would do that as a first step. Oh. Yeah. So this will actually bring me to um, a question. Did you get support from uh, from the administration or from professors or from the institute itself? Like uh, someone who said, yeah, perfect, this is a good idea. Uh, you have to go for it or things like this? Uh, other than the people that I contacted to try uh, to help me with this, 
no, <laughs> not so much, but also that's because I'm given kind of free reign to uh, make events. So I yeah. didn't really need someone up above me telling me to go ahead for it because I'm already allowed to do so. Okay. So did you bring this idea to um, the leader of an institute or not? Yeah. Uh, I uh, emailed the head of the geology department mm -hmm. um, and they said the best person to talk to would be this person. So I emailed that person and uh, that's currently the person who I am working with, uh, which I think you are familiar with. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, I haven't gotten anyone on the chemistry side as of yet, but uh, I'm trying to fill in that spot. So you, you're using the same approach. So you are also sending a sort of an email to the head of the department and you say, yeah, we are trying to do so and we're looking for this person or a person to take care of our part or you, or yeah. you are searching by yourself. Uh, so what I would do is um, look through the faculty of UIT and then see who would be best. Usually I go for the head of the department first because they would know who would be best for that uh, better than I would just from reading the profiles on UIT. Mm. And then if they tell me someone better or if they don't tell me someone better, uh, I will try to find a specific person within the department and email them and see if they're interested. Okay. But in general, from your experience from your department, you happy from the interaction in general, like they reply you and then they orient you to the right person and from this point you start to discuss and go. So yeah. there is sort of support. There is a sort of what? Sort of support. Yeah. Yeah. But not financial or there is some financial support as well. Mm. Uh, yeah. I have some financial support as a student assistant. I can mm -hmm. request funds, um, but considering we're just doing events, uh, it wouldn't mm -hmm. be too expensive anyway. It would be food and booking times. And uh, if we did a trip, uh, setting up like a bus or something. You know? Okay, so s some simple things. Yeah. Somehow, yep. No, I am, I am very happy to, to hear something like this because, you know, uh, I think this is the same point of view of a business sector, same point of view of uh, uh, academic. Today, today morning, I had an interview with uh, Professor Sabina and she reflected on the importance of uh, this uh, multidisciplinary courses. Uh, for the business interviews, so they also reflected uh, these things. But I am very happy to, to hear that also from a from, uh, point of view of students and uh, junior researcher, that they uh, see the point of doing this, this uh, joint program, this program that can bring up new skills to students. So this, this is very great. Um, I think I have finished most of the point here, but I don't know if you can add something about this topic or... So for example, if, if, if I would like to create a course, not, not just an event, uh, and this course is actually, uh, uh, will um, present two different topics like business administration and the chemistry, for example. What's the start point I should do? Well, I think uh, the most simple uh, starting points are where they actually come together within um, industry or research. So for example, if we're talking about uh, the mining industry, um, there are many, many places that we can talk about geology and chemistry, mm. uh, especially within the extraction of whatever metal or mineral you're trying to extract. Um, almost every single step along the way will have chemical processes you can talk about. And then 
if the student knows about these chemical processes, they can be applied to them more efficiently once they do get into industry. Yeah. yeah. So I would start there at where they uh, naturally hit each other within industry or research um, because it's already known that they hit there. Yeah, that's correct. But actually, this is just one question jump in my head. Because we was speaking all, all the discussion about uh, uh, chemistry, geology, and we try to give some skills uh, to students for this two, three subject about each other or add a layer at the top of their knowledge related to administration and business. But if we go to the other topic, so if we go to school of business, for example, or students who are uh, studying pure law or topics related to something not to science, do you think it's good as well to bring some science to their topics? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm not exactly sure uh, how it would be too related uh, to a specific course, but if they had a course on, say, bioethics or something, mm. that would be really helpful for, say, lawmakers or people who are going to be uh, creating the regulations within chemical businesses or something like that. Um, I think that is a very important topic. Uh, mm. I actually have an example of why that is important no, that I think is kind of funny. Um, so here at uh, research labs, of course, you have to sort your chemicals into different types of waste so that they can be uh, efficiently and cleanly processed by waste companies. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, some of the groupings are a little bit weird. Um, you would think that, for example, um, something that is flammable shouldn't be with something that's uh, explosive. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to mix those. Um, but with the groups of waste that we have now, sometimes you run into this issue. Yes, yes. Um, and that's, I think that's a direct consequence of the people making the laws not really understanding the chemistry. Exactly. Actually, yeah. this is bringing me to a, a, a very nice story. I have a friend, a close friend, he's working with the Remix, and he highlighted me the same point. He says that, uh, people at uh, uh, some people they not aware about the chemical uh, different chemical and how they are interact with each other and he tried to reach to them and say okay it's not possible to put this chemical beside this one because if each yeah. other touch touch each other it would be a problem and of course they didn't believe him <laughs> for some reason <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 this is a very good exam example. Actually, you are highlighted here. Uh, maybe uh, these people are a skilled person to do to do uh, some administration issue, some regulation. But when it comes to um, chemical material, when it comes to biological process, we need to give them not deep knowledge, but at least to inform them. Okay, chemical material can interact with each other with different behavior. So we need to take care of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also this brings me to this point about uh, research data. You know, you know, here at uh, in Europe in general, we have this policy about open science and open research data and these things. And uh, there is a lot of regulation will, will, will coming soon about this, this point. Uh, how you publish your data, how you make it available, how these things. But who is putting this regulation is uh, people who study law. Nothing related to data or research or, mm -hmm. right? So they need to know a bit about what the data is, what the, the research data is, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think, I think, 
The point that we have highlighted today during this, this discussion, um, not only, uh, not only uh, to give some skills for people who are studying science, pure science, chemistry, geology, biology, and so on, but also people who are studying business, who are studying law, who are studying administration, maybe they need a bit of some information about uh, pure science. So you agree yeah. with me? Yeah. Yeah, super, this is good. <laughs> yeah, great. So I think, I think um, maybe this is time to have a break for our audience. And I would like to thank you very much. And um, I am very, very interested to be updated about this geology uh, chemistry program. So I hope that we can share knowledge later about this, maybe audience, our audience for this workshop, maybe they are interesting just to come and see because this is an, an experiment. You are running an experiment that uh, bring two subjects together not in a course, but in event. And then they can see the feedback for students, like they can come, they can see, okay, maybe student will be happy, maybe not, just to measure uh, the outcome of this events. And then they can decide after that, okay, maybe this is a nice experiment. We can, we can go more in deep and we can create courses that uh, include more topic uh, together. Yeah, so thanks a lot, uh, Cole, and uh, see you around. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a nice day. <laughs>